Welcome to Epicore Eclipse Simplified, where every topic is broken down into a bite-sized chunk. Let's dive in. Let's go to this little search bar up here. First off, you need to know that it searches menus, customers, vendors, contacts, products, and orders. The beauty of it is you do not have to differentiate and tell it which one you're searching for. It knows. So for example, if I type in ECL space test, there's multiple things in my system that match that. The menu description, customers, vendors, products. And if you click the plus sign, you can click straight to that information. Another way that you can use this is to enter in your actual sales order number. You can select it. It'll open up sales order. It also works for purchase order. Interestingly enough, it will not work for transfer orders. But if you type in a transfer order in a quick sales order entry, it'll actually bring up the transfer. Nice little hack for you there. Another way that you can search is by zip code. If you type in a zip code, it'll bring up all customers and all vendors that match that zip code. Another fun way to search is by typing in the last four digits of your phone number. It'll bring up all customers and all vendors that have that as their last four digits. But if you want to dial it in a little bit closer, you can type the entire phone number. It'll narrow it down and it'll show us the customer. But here's an interesting thing. If you type this, notice that there are dashes in the phone number that it's recalling, but we didn't put dashes in our search term. In the same way, if I search for half inch, I don't have to put the slash quote, and I don't have to type the terms in order. Notice I searched tape meg one two, and it brought up meg's green half inch tape. So Eclipse does not pay attention to any of the special characters in a description or in your searches, except for two things. You have to watch the spaces and the periods. We'll talk more about that later. And quite possibly the most exciting thing about this is when you can type a customer's PO. We've all had it happen. Customer calls up on the phone, can you look at the super easy PO for me? And we say, where the heck is that? If you just type in their PO up here, it will bring up the sales order that is tied to that PO. Super fun. And lastly, one other thing you might wanna search up here is for a contact. If you type in a contact name, it will bring that up in this search as well. Now I took a trusty snip of this next screenshot when it happened to me earlier today. Have you gotten sick of selecting a location every time you log into Eclipse? There could be a simple fix to that. If you click on this little gear wheel up here, the most important thing you're gonna to go to is solar preferences. And once you get there, there's a terminal ID. Well, maybe as simple as asking your IT team for what your terminal ID should be. And then that location button disappears and every time you log on, it's gonna be automatic. It is great. Okay, continue with our header up here. You have your help file right here. You have your job queue here. Don't worry about that. We'll cover that in a future episode. You have your hold file also called the spooler. Don't worry about that. We'll cover that in a future episode. You also have your messages, a way to communicate with anybody on your team. But before we get to messaging, we need to talk about this secret of Eclipse. For example, here you can see I have make purple tape, zero available. I have make purple tape. 134 available. How is that possible, you say? Did I do something in the back end? No, you can actually have the exact same description in Eclipse a million times. So how does Eclipse keep track of both of these numbers, but different quantities? How does it know I PO'd this one and not this one? The answer is the internal ID number. At the bottom of every screen, you'll see an internal ID. This one is 142126. This one is 112103. So what Eclipse is actually looking at when you PO or when you sell something on a sales order is the internal ID. Boom, we have customers and vendors. Let's look at them. Bottom left of the screen, customer number 3921 is Eclipse test. Vendor number 3324 is Megtown test. There is an internal ID tied to all the records within Eclipse. And that is a shortcut within Eclipse messaging system. Let's say I wanna send a message to Eclipse test about Megtown vendor. I could say, look at Megtown test the vendor, or I could say, check out this vendor. 3324, and he's gonna love me. Do you know why he's gonna love me? He's gonna love me because I gave him a hyperlink. He can now click on this and see AP inquiry, AP summary, vendor maintenance. Whoa, I bet you're wondering, what are we gonna do for customer? I'm also gonna do an ampersand, three, two, one. You're gonna say, whoa, I can now see AR inquiry, AR summary, customer maintenance. How did the system know? because the internal ID is tied to a vendor here and here is tied to a customer, but they're both in the same file. Why does that matter, you ask? Because if I wanna bring up one of the items that we were talking about earlier, like Meg Purple Tape, I cannot do an ampersand 
142126 because that number does not exist in the entity file, which houses both vendors and customers. Instead, I have to do a caret, 142126. Boom. Now my teammate loves me because he can see inventory inquiry, product future ledger, and so on and so forth. He can see whatever he needs to see all at a click of a link. Super cool, right? Now you're probably wondering, well, how do you do that with contacts? Yeah, that's not so cool. That's a CNT, a pound, and then your contact number. Eh, who really cares? That's not a shortcut. Now I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be cool if you could do the same thing with sales orders and purchase orders and send a direct link? I've got news for you. You can. And lo and behold, it also holds true for transfers. One more thing I want to talk about. It says no messages to display up here. That is a bulletin board system for your entire organization. They can send messages to specific groups or to everybody all at once. There's really nothing you need to do here. Just pay attention to it. And when a message comes up, react accordingly. Please do note our disclaimer and do not get yourself into trouble by trying to do something you have not been trained to do by your own company. We always encourage you to ask questions early and often.